Another example I would like to discuss about is related to Azure AD because as I mentioned in a previous video that I link um, that you can find the link uh, in the description. This is the subject. This is one of the subjects where people get confused very easily. So uh, we'll discuss lots of um, examples on this topic so that you can understand um, better and you can um, you can be comfortable in the exam day. So I chose two users, John and Sophie. Okay, let's go back a bit. Okay, so we have two users. Um, we have two virtual machines. One of them is Azure AD registered, the other one is Azure AD joint. And we have two groups, one and two. The, the first one is assigned and the second one is a dynamic device. So this is the very simplified scenario. As I've already explained a couple of times before, I don't want to give a um, full example in the, uh, from the exam. Maybe I'll do that in the next videos. But for now, what I want to do is to simplify as much as I can the context so that you can see what's actually the real question behind all that huge scenario that they can invent. Because trust me, they have a lot of imaginations and you can get distracted quite easily. So if we go back to our example, the first question that you can expect is, is John, which is a cloud device admin, able to add VM2, so the second virtual machine, to the group one? And in order to answer to this question, you have to check two things. The first one is, what's his role? And in this case, he's cloud device admin. And the second one is, is he owner of the group? And the answer is here, yes. So in this case, he's able to do this. And if we go to to the documenta documentation, so Microsoft documentation, and you check Azure AD built-in roles because uh, we are talking about built-in uh, built roles right now. And so if you check cloud device administrator, you can see it here. You're gonna see that these users are able to enable, disable, and delete devices in Azure AD. Okay, the rest is not uh, important. So you have the question, uh, the answer right here. Now, if you get the question is Sophie in this case, which is user admin, is she able to add virtual machine one to the group one? Knowing that, yeah, she's a user admin, right? And what you have to know here is that yes, she is able to do that. And why is that? Because since she's user admin, then she's able to manage various aspects related to users and groups uh, um, administration. And if we go back to the documentation and we check user admin administrator you'll be able to see in here that users in this role are able to create users manage all aspects of users of course there are some exceptions but you can see users with this role can create and manage all groups which is create and manage user views, manage support tickets, but okay, yeah, actually this is not important. What we need to know is this part. And the third question here that you can get is Sophie able to join VM1 to the group one. And actually here you have to pay attention. So for the group one, we saw that this is an assigned group group 2 is a dynamic device. This is the key point here. 
Sophie is owner to this group and she stays um, she's still user admin and because this group is a dynamic one then she's not able to do this this is um, The next example is on load balancers. So we're going to discuss about the two scenarios when the load balancer is basic and when the load balancer is a standard one. And we also have three virtual machines and we want to know what conditions should be met when we want to load balance requests across the three virtual machines in each case. So if we take the first one, so if we consider the basic load balancer, which is cheaper, what do we need to do? Okay, it went too far. Okay, so what do we need to do uh, if we want to do the load balancing? So we need to know, and you have to remember that in this case, the three virtual machines need to be in the same availability set or in the same virtual machine scale set. If you want to use the load balancer, the standard one. In this case, the virtual machines need to be part of the same virtual network. Uh, 